Let me repeat that. Google gives their money to the music industry automatically because they're so afraid of them. <laughs> okay. And you want to tell me that some of these creators on Twitch think that they can get away with this. They have no idea what's coming. Okay. Large creators are very likely to get sued. Again, I put the I put the rate at greater than 90% within the next six months to a year if they do not. At this point, guys, I think it's fair to say I got no clue what's going on with the MCA. If you want to check out people like Devin Nash, but so many other people out there giving a variety of opinions of what the future of Twitch might be given these DMCA notices. Let's go, Jake. So I love this guy. Keep on sending me clips. You know who you are on this one. I think one of the funnier back and forths I have ever seen between a guy like Nick Merckx and Tim the Tatman. This past weekend, we talked about people like Tim the Tatman, Pokimane, tons of Twitch streamers out there choosing to delete everything on their channel to avoid any future issues and potential bans with DMCA. It was in this conversation between Nick Merckx and Tim, though, where Nick Merckx says he talked to someone and he feels at ease and assured that he's not going to delete anything and he will be just fine. I, I'm baffled because I don't know what's going on, but more importantly, here's the conversation. No. I just, you uh, maybe, you're talking, maybe you're not talking, maybe you're not talking, who you I don't know who you're talking, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know what the communication is. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. If Nicholas... If you Nick. <laughs> delete your shit, right. you are at risk of getting DMCA strike, and there is an automated system. Tip, tip, don't, don't, just, just don't. He just ignores just, it. I got system. it. Do you not understand DMCA? These guys could sue you. Do you okay. Know, they really want to be assholes. Do you not understand? Okay. So, 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 yeah, they're crazy. They're absolutely insane that they think that they can, that they think that they're protected from this. This is exactly what happened on YouTube individual creators that were the biggest that were violating it went down first before twitch was able to or before youtube was able to build automated systems but twitch can't even be fucked to do that like I, those they're like nick Merckx and xqc they're crazy they're absolutely insane they won't go after the biggest they'll go after mid-tier streamers no that's completely untrue it's completely the opposite it's completely the opposite of course they'll go after the big people first that'll make the most press Again, we, this happened on YouTube. They have the most money. They'll want to make examples. Exactly, Billy. Yeah. Okay, so you have to understand how these large music companies think, okay? Like, the large music companies, the RIAA is, like, on a hell-bent quest to attack anyone who creates unlicensed music or broadcast unlicensed music. And the only thing that has stopped them from doing this on Twitch has been that they weren't aware of it. That literally was it. And if you watched my videos that I made about this six months ago, I said that. I'm like, like okay, that, that's why I built like huge DMCA resources and stuff like that. The, the, you have to understand, okay, there, there's an enormous amount. Let's like break this down real quick. So I think people don't understand the gravity of the situation, okay? Like, so every music play, um, or let, let's, let's begin, okay? Everything is advertising. Genesis 1-1, the book of Devin Nash, okay? When God created the, the earth, God said, let there be advertising. And there was, and God looked at it, and he said it was good, Okay. Everything is advertising. What does that mean? That means that everything that is broadcasted can be advertised on, which equals money. Money, as it's defined, is called CPM. This is basically the way that advertising in the world of digital stuff uh, exists. CPM is cost per mule or 1,000, you can think of it of, and basically is 1,000 impressions or views or engagements or whatever, they all have different meanings, um, equals X number of dollars or cents, okay? So if you guys 1,000 times watch me and watch an ad, that equates to some amount of value, right? There's, there's, a, there's a dollar value that that equates to because you're watching an ad, you have a chance to buy that ad, and because you have a chance to buy that ad, that means that that's worth something to the people that advertise, right? So if we understand that, we understand all this stuff, okay? Everything is advertising. Music's advertising too. When music plays, it has a value associated with that play, okay? So if one streamer broadcasts a song 
to a thousand viewers, every play of that song has a literal value, okay? And it's X times a thousand equals value, right? Everybody with me so far? Which means that the RIA and other record labels can collect and want to collect that value from streamers, platforms, etc. I know I type very fast. Per play. Okay, so if basically there's an enormous financial incentive within these companies to do this. Playing a song is free advertising to the artist, would you agree? To some extent, yes. Um, and that may be a beneficial relationship which can be established between, for example, someone like myself and God as an astronaut, where I have permission to play their music on my stream because I can introduce a lot of people to it. However, if you're playing someone like Kanye or you're playing someone like Rihanna or something, right, there is another argument to be made that that played music is just value lost for that artist. Or it might just be a smaller artist that just doesn't agree with um, the idea that exposure is a sufficient way to pay for their creative work, which is put within the rights, within the law, is perfectly their right to decide. Okay. So, as far as the record labels are concerned, Twitch is stealing every day tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars that they could be earning, that they could be rightfully earning under United States law. And they're very unhappy. And now we're learning that not only is Twitch doing that, but they've also been negligent in the requests that the RIA has been sending for years to be able to handle this problem. But I, I want to be really clear that like, I don't, I don't like, I'm not trying to absolve DMCA or whatever. I'm just, I'm just trying to explain like what's going to happen. Okay. So if we go to YouTube and we look at this, YouTube uh, built an automated content ID system um, it doesn't have a name really, but what it does is on YouTube, every video that gets uploaded, uh, even private videos, is passed through a system. Uh, that system detects copyright music and flags it uh, with two options, either delete that part of the video or uh, monetize it on behalf of the, cre the original creator. YouTube system is the most advanced system on earth, and YouTube implemented this system, which took them years to make and millions and millions of dollars, exclusively because of pressure from the music industry. So keeping in mind that Twitch hasn't done that, right, for the past, well, the, the entire time, they just haven't done that. So the automated content ID system was made by YouTube because they were so afraid of what was going to happen if they didn't do it. And several times in the history of YouTube, and I think a lot of people don't understand this, in 2007, right, YouTube fought Viacom and was one court case away from being shut down as a website. It was very close, right? Like YouTube as it is now only exists because of, uh, there's, a, there's a quote um, that says like, every day is one step to the left or right of utopia or annihilation, right? And like what that means is like, we are... We are very, very close to the edge, like the precipice. Like it's one button push away from a nuke missile, right? Like it's just, it's one, it, it, like we are in a really good place, but every single day we're right on that precipice. You don't see it because you live your life every day, whatever order a sandwich who gives it, right? But you're really, like we're really close. So YouTube only really scraped by because Google was willing to invest millions of dollars and years and years and years of work to put in an automated content ID system, which the RIA and the music industry is sort of okay with. And they still do lawsuits to YouTube all the time. There's always open lawsuits about copyright infringement. So what is going to happen exactly, okay? Well, like, given that we now have, like, all this background and, like, we kind of understand what's happening, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to separate this into four categories. Platform, which is Twitch. Large creators, which is like plus 10,000 viewers. Medium creators, which is like one to 5,000 viewers. And small creators. This isn't exactly how the stats shake up because in reality, like a small creator at 1,000 viewers would still be like 0.001% of the platform, but we're just gonna like ignore that for the purposes of this. Okay, so what'll happen? 
Twitch will 100% be buried in lawsuits. I'm not a lawyer, and I don't understand exactly what this means. Um, YouTube, it, it apparently isn't enough to like completely shut down a platform as long as that platform is still operating within Safe Harbor because uh, there are, but, but it, it's millions and millions of dollars. YouTube has been fighting these for years. I, I don't think that this in of itself is going to be enough to like shut down the platform or whatever. It hasn't been for YouTube. YouTube's been able to get by, but notably there have been a couple of lawsuits. I mean, Twitch is a different medium, and notably there have been a couple of lawsuits, and it only takes one judge to rule a different way to shut down the platform. And I, I want people to be really understand. Twitch isn't this platform that's like too big to fail at all. There have been there's been historical reference of major major websites going down to DMCA permanently. Everyone, uh, a few people might remember poker is a great analogy where poker was a massive industry online was shut down literally overnight by the federal government. Never underestimate what the federal government will shut down. They don't care that Twitch is like a big platform where everybody's using it or whatever. They'll shut it down overnight if they think that they, if they think that Twitch operates outside of uh, safe harbor, they will shut it down overnight. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. And Amazon doesn't care either. Amazon is, um, that's another important thing, right? Is that Amazon, if, if Amazon assumes sufficient liability, I know there's Twitch staff members that disagree with this, but you, you better be prepared. If Amazon believes that they're assuming sufficient liability for something like Twitch, they will, sh they will, they will shut down the website themselves, right? Because Amazon is losing money on Twitch every year. It's a, it's a trillion dollar company. They're, they're, they're not going to bother with something that is less than 0.00001% of their revenue, that literally none of their revenue, that is causing them 80% of their liability. Like, they're not going to do that, right? They already have Amazon Music Services. They don't, they don't care that much. They're not tied into what, the, the, in the same way that Google and Facebook are tied in because of dynamic ads. Like, Amazon doesn't have an ad network that is um, as robust as something like Google or Facebook's ad network. They don't rely on Twitch for their revenue. They're a shopping service. They don't care about this. So um, I think I don't I don't know what the implications of it are. Best case scenario is like maybe this gets this shaked out in court and, uh, you know, Twitch keeps going. Worst case scenario, the government determines that Twitch is outside of safe harbor and uh, nukes the website. I don't know. I put that at about like 20 or 30 percent right now. OK, what will happen to large creators? Um, this is like the the main thing that I think everybody is sleeping on. So I'm talking about like the Nick Merckx or the SQCs or things like that. These guys will get lawsuits if they don't change. I just want to make that really clear. It sounds nuts to you right now, but anyone that lived through YouTube understands how this works. So the let me kind of explain why I believe this. I I put the um I put the chance of someone like Nick Merckx if he doesn't delete his content at getting a lawsuit at like greater than ninety percent. And I'll try to explain why that why I feel that way. So generally speaking. Um, not always, sometimes they'll do it as a personal vendetta, but a company will not like really bother to do a lawsuit on somebody and like do a bunch of stuff unless they deliberately like are costing that company a ton of potential revenue. But in this case with the record labels and the companies, they are right. So let's talk about where liability is. And when I say liability, I mean like where, uh, who gets in trouble if something goes wrong. It's not the platform, right? Mostly. Unless the the only way that the platform gets in trouble is if they are they are so grossly negligent that they are outside of safe harbor for DMCA and thus the federal government comes and shuts them down. It's hard to do too because you have to as long as you can prove you're in good faith, you're going to stay within safe harbor. So where's the rest of the liability? Who gets in trouble for playing illegal music? What well, we do, right? It's it's individual creators. It's it's individual people's responsibility to broadcast that on their um, their, their channel. It's not on Twitch. In fact, Twitch's contracts actually put the personal liability on the creator in writing, but even if they didn't do that, the, the it's on the creator anyway, in the same way as it's on the creator on YouTube. Now, what prevents a ton of lawsuits on YouTube is that YouTube introduced a content ID system that flags that content before it goes up. But on Twitch, they're using a system called Audible Magic which only detects about 10% of DMCA-able content. So if you go through Nick Merck's VODs, you will notice that a lot of the VODs are not muted. Despite the fact that Twitch says that they've muted DMCA content, you can very clearly go through the VODs, and you will see hours and hours of content that's not muted. So what the music industry does is they, they, they program these scripts and these bots to go through, and through a thing called OCR, they detect what 
music is, and then they link it one to one, and then they find all instances of that music being played, and every single one of those musics being played is a separate violation. Now, the music industry is so advanced at doing this at this point that they can even do it for live content. The music industry has a program that I saw this weekend when I was looking at when I was looking into all this because we've been spending hours and hours on this topic that can detect live music being played right now like on this stream within a quarter of a second automatically send a DMCA request to take it down per play they can do that right now that technology exists right now they have it the only thing that's stopping them from applying that to Twitch is that they just haven't yet because they haven't, they haven't turned their eye to them till now. So what happens in the best case if a ton of DMCA requests are served to Nick Merckx? It's kind of like one of three things. Maybe number one is Twitch bans the channel and says, okay, um, that creator messed up we're going to ban him so we stay within safe harbor. That's actually the best case scenario for Nick Merckx is that he gets banned. That's actually the best case scenario <laughs> is that he gets banned. Everything's worse. Everything after that is worse than that, okay? <laughs> if um, So that's number one. Um, Twitch could also potentially take on personal liability for Nick Merckx, and they could say, okay, um, we, we removed all the offending content, and going forward, we, um, Nick Merckx will not do this anymore. And then they can justify that. And that's a possibility. They could possibly protect him because he's such a big creator. Um, and, and, and maybe that happens. So the best case scenario is like Twitch gets, like Twitch bans Nick Merckx. Uh, he loses all of his content. He gets unbanned and he has to like fly right and do the right thing. That's like the best, best case scenario. Uh, the second worst case scenario is that Twitch bans him and doesn't protect him. That's the most likely scenario. The third uh, situation is that, um, is the following. The record industry does this. They look into this. They look into broadcasters that are streaming to 30,000 viewers, 40,000 viewers, and see them playing Drake, and they go, we need to make an example of this dude so we can scare everyone else. Plus, we're going to make a ton of money if we do this. And they serve a lawsuit directly to Nick Merckx per play, per song, for every single violation that he's done. Remember, they already have the technology to do this. Okay, so the limit for a court case that I could find for those violations is $4 million. And for the amount of plays that you have on a, uh, on, 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 on a, on a stream like that for 50,000 viewers or however many he gets, right, easily hits that limit. Okay? So music industry doesn't have to DMCA. They can just serve a lawsuit to you directly. A DMCA just means, hey, take this down or we will sue you. They still can sue you. You're in violation of federal law for playing their music, right? So they can sue you if they want to. And people that are saying, oh, no, that's never going to happen, don't understand, haven't lived very long, okay? Because the music industry has been suing individuals since 2001, maybe earlier, since Napster. The, the music, hell, the mu it, has to, it doesn't even need to be people that are broadcasting shit. The music industry has sued individual people just for storing stuff on their hard drive that they then uploaded to Kazaa or to uh, Napster. They are savages. And, and, and they will not hesitate to sue a large creator on Twitch in order to establish a precedent that everyone else should fear them and that they should make a ton of money off this. Think about a company like Google, okay? Google makes $30 billion a quarter off of ads. And they're so afraid of the music industry that they give their money the money that they would make automatically to rights holders on YouTube. Let me repeat that. Google gives their money to the music industry automatically because they're so afraid of them. <laughs> okay. And you want to tell me that some of these creators on Twitch think that they can get away with this. They have no idea what's coming. Okay? Large creators are very likely to get sued. Again, I put, the, I put the rate at greater than 90% within the next six months to a year if they do not absolutely delete everything and stop fucking around with DMCA. And that includes playing music live in real time. Stop doing that shit. If you're a 50,000 viewer Andy, okay, 
All right, listen. Like, let's just do a little bit of fun math right now, okay? <clears throat> Streamers hate when I do this. Here we go. How many subs does Nick have right now? 22,000. No, 49,837. Uh, so 49,837 times 3.5 is $174,000 a month. It's 3.5 because they get a preferential partial quit. Times 12, Nick Merckx is pulling $2,093,154 off subs alone. Doesn't include donations, ad revenue, YouTube, uh, sponsorships, team affiliations, equity in person businesses, apparel, anything like that. $2 million cool just off of subs. Do you think that Nick Merckx can afford to hire a team to solve this problem? To get him proper licensing for music on his channel, no problem. He could hire five people right now that would do that like that. Here you go. Here's all your licensed music, all the permissions. You didn't have to do a thing. Obviously, right? It is insane to me that somebody stands to lose all of this because they refuse to delete their con. It's nuts. It's it, it, it's crazy, and, and and like it is so likely. Like like this is this is like ego to the max that they think that they're invulnerable from this. It's just it's it's this the a classic Achilles heel. It really is, it really is. That's what's gonna happen to large creators. Let's talk about medium and small creators. Okay, so this is a separate section. So um, medium and small creators are too small for the RIA or people to typically go after. And what will happen is uh, they'll just get automated takedown requests. These will be uh, basically just be OCR like little bots that that, that uh, automatically submit requests and. Uh, as to what happens, the the actual honest truth is I don't know, um, because it's any number of things. It, it could be that like a bunch of channels get banned. It could be that some channels get banned. It could be that like Twitch just like um, absolves responsibility and then like it goes on individual creators. I don't really know. It, 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 it's, it's never happened before, and Twitch can't allow like every one of its like medium and small creators, like the vast majority of people that are violating DMCA to be banned all at once because like we wouldn't have a platform. So I'm not really sure of like the implications of the automated requests. I know that the, I know that people will be getting them and the current, the, the current policy on Twitch is three DMCA strikes that never fade from your account equals instant and permanent ban with no recourse or return. As far as I know, no one's ever returned from a DMCA ban on Twitch. Also, uh, one music play or song equals one strike. So you could very easily be completely banned for um, one stream or one hour of one stream. And there's no telling how far this goes. So that is the reason why... I think that the large creators are absolutely crazy to not do this. I'm going to put greater than 90% here because there's still, obviously there's a chance they don't get a lawsuit. I mean, maybe they just get avoided or maybe the music industry and Twitch work things out, right? Like, I don't know. But the sheer negligence that Twitch has shown in handling this issue thus far, which is a whole topic in of itself, resulting in millions and millions of hours of deleted content, um, doesn't lend me to believe that this is something that is likely to happen. If you are a creator above 10,000 viewers on the website right now, you will 100% have to delete everything you've created and save it, archive it, right? But one thing I'm seeing, which is like on like XQC's channel, right? This is crazy to me is like, if you check out his channel and you go to videos, he deleted all the stuff he was told to do on that date, but now he has four VODs of DMCA-able content. All of this content, almost the entire time, he was playing DMCA-able music. And all of the quips that he created are also individual violations or things that other people created in his community. So right here on his, on, on, on his, like, I don't know if he doesn't understand that, like, if you, like, you need to stop doing VODs. And I, I mean, really what you need to do is you need to stop doing unlicensed content, even live, because they're going to catch that too. But 
the fact that like these four VODs exist, this is hundreds of violations within these VODs. He's not protected at all. He's not any more protected than he was five days ago. So I, I feel like a lot of these large creators got these emails and are just like, oh, I got to delete everything. And then they delete everything. And then they're just going on like everything is normal. And even some people are going like, oh, well, I'll just stop streaming on Twitch and I'm going to go over to YouTube and I'm and then that'll be fine over there and I'm going to do the same thing. Like, no, like YouTube already has systems to prevent this. I just, and I've said this before, and I just say, I can't get into the mind of streamers, man. I can't do it. Like, the just the, the sheer lack of um, any kind of sense just blows my mind all the time. I'm constantly surprised by how little broadcasters care about their enterprise. It's 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 just it's just it's it's astounding to me. It's insane. Like I think at least on YouTube you have to like quick upload video and you have to like name it and stuff. So you have to put in some work or whatever. So like creators have some business sense. But oh man, like on on Twitch it's like you just click the start streaming button and then you're good. It's like a monkey with a typewriter can find out how to do it. It's just insane. Nothing is solved as a result of like the the massive de the massive deleting of all this stuff. Hundreds and hundreds of people are still in violation of it. There are still thousands of hours of unbroadcasted un un DMCA content, and now there's pretty good evidence that Twitch's sad attempt to fix it which quite possibly, probably, doesn't even have proper licensing, was the thing that caused all this in the first place. And, and again, I'm, I'm stuck. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know how I reconcile in my own head how to not, how, 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 to, um, how, how to not resent Twitch to the maximum for this, right? That at the very least, they could have just provided an all like like you don't want to build YouTube's like massive mother brain AI that is like an automated content system that costs you millions of dollars because you maybe don't have the money or it's a budget issue you don't have the developers whatever I'll accept that okay but the ability to private or unlist videos the the ability to unlist our vods and our clips until such a time where we can address these issues or save the content. Why give everyone three days? And why not allow people to private or, unli or unlist their stuff? It takes like two developers. Like, how hard is it? I've got coders in my community, right? Like, how hard is it to make a hide function? It's not that hard. And I'm, I'm, I'm stuck thinking that the only reason why they wouldn't do this is to save themselves on AWS server costs. That the deletion of millions and millions of hours of content saved them a good bit of money, and that that was either a negligence decision or an internally malicious decision for creators to lose years of their work and their legacy on a scare tactic instead of providing services that in any way support creators building a brand. And, 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 and if, I could, if I could tell you, it hasn't ever been more true than today. Um, I have completely lost faith in Twitch as an evergreen platform. And when I say evergreen, I mean no content should live here. This should exist like Periscope or Instagram Live exists. It should basically be a website where you stream for the moment, but your brand and your professionalism and everything else exists somewhere else. Like, like Twitch has demonstrated that they are utterly incompetent and unable to support a website that creates or builds a brand compared to every other social media website on the internet that's done this successfully, relatively successfully. There's like no reason to have faith in them going forward. I don't know. That's where we're at. I think that these larger content creators are insane. Um, I, I I think there's a greater greater than ninety percent chance that they will get that they will get at least banned, if not all their content deleted, if not direct lawsuits, if they don't shape up. Um, the lack of understanding that these streamers are demonstrating 
is appalling and the lack of desire to become informed on this is insane. And um, I respect a lot of these content creators individually, including the ones I've mentioned, XQC in particular, because I think that they are artists of their craft. And I think that they are, um, they do something that is very difficult to do. And I, I, I genuinely fear for their careers going forward. Um, I think messing with the music industry is the very definition of playing with fire. And we have 20 years, 20 years of history seeing why that is. So we'll see what happens. The next six to 12 months are going to be insane. It's going to be crazy. And yeah, Twitch is a platform. Everything is up in the air right now. Um, and make no mistake, I think final thought on this, that this is just due to gross negligence. Like, like Twitch could have addressed these problems months and months and years and years ago. Instead, they threw their creators to the wolves, said, let you figure it out, and failed to develop a content.